we started with counting money and comparing money, um, which the students did really well at um, since they started that in second grade. This year we're start or this week we're starting a new skill for making change. We only make change from five dollars at the most. So I'm going to show you two different strategies that you can use. Whichever one your child likes the best is what they can use. But I do want to show you two options. So one is more visual and then one is with subtraction. Um, some students aren't very good subtracting, so the visual way might be better. So I'm going to show you first. Let me make a problem. Um, All right, so I just made up a problem. We'll have similar ones that they'll be working with. <clears throat> so this is just a word problem. So it says Colton went to 7-Eleven to buy some snacks. His total was three seventy-three, dollars and he, spent, he paid with a $5 bill. How much change will Colton receive? So the first one I'm going to show you is with subtraction, since that's the way most parents have learned, grandparents, aunts, uncles. So it is a word problem, so the students could use our cubes, which we've always we've been using all year. They're really good about it. We would circle our numbers. So 373 and five dollars. They would underline their question. How much change did he receive? Um, when we're making change, that means we're going to subtract. Um, there's no extra numbers, and then S is just for us to solve. So if you're going to do the subtraction way, make sure when they, they line up their numbers, this is where they could mess up. They put their decimal, zero, zero. We always put the bigger amount on top, so we have $5. Subtract, $3, and we have to keep them lined up. So we have the dollars lined up the 10 cents lined up and the pennies lined up. So as long as they keep their numbers lined up, their subtraction will be perfect. All right, so they know we can't do zero minus three, so we have to go next door. But we can't go to our five, so we have, or our zero, so we have to go to our five. So we're gonna borrow from our five, it's gonna make it a four. The zero will become a 10. Now I can borrow from next door. So this 10 will become a nine the zero will become a 10. So if your child is really good with subtracting across zeros, they can do this way. It won't always be across zeros. I just wanted to show you how we regroup and borrow from next door. So 10 minus three is seven. Nine minus seven is two. And five, four minus three is one. So his change would be $1 and 27 cents. Now the best thing would be for them to be able to check their work to make sure they got it right. So if they added the change, $1.27 plus how much he spent, $3.73, they should get $5. So seven plus three is 10, put our 10, carry our one next door, Seven plus two is nine, plus one is 10. So I'll put my zero, bring my decimal down again for my dollars. My one next door, one plus one is two, two plus three is five. So I know I got it right because that's the $5 bill that he spent. So your change is 127. So that is the first way. Let me go ahead and show you Another way which students really like and are good at, I'm going to go ahead and leave the cubes up here. I'm not going to re-go through it for you guys. This way is like a number line. So if your student loves number lines, this will be perfect. So they're going to draw a number line. And we'll be using what I like to call mountain and hills to get our total for our change. 
So you're going to put the $5 at the end. That's how much he paid with. And then his total was 373. So we're going to put the total at the opposite end. And then we're going to use what I call mountain and hills to get to $5. Oops, not 73. Whoops. So we like to go to ra nice round numbers. So I'm going to add one penny. Let me write my numbers a little bit smaller. Let me move it over. Three. 73 all right so we're gonna add until we get to five dollars so I'm gonna add two cents here so I'm gonna add point two cents so two pennies I'm gonna add when I add two pennies to 375 it's gonna bring me to three or 373 it's gonna bring me to 375 sorry for messing up you guys now I know that if I have 375 if I add one more quarter that'll give me to the next dollar your student can also do by fives, they can do by tens, whatever they want, but I'm going to go ahead and do by a quarter since we've been talking about it in class. So now I can write my quarter on top of this little hill. All right, so that brings me to four dollars. And now I'm at even dollars, so now all I have to do is add my dollars until I get to five. So one dollar added to four dollars is five dollars. So I'm going to go ahead and put my dollar up here. And now all I have to do is add my amounts together. So I have one dollar, a dollar twenty-five, and a dollar twenty-seven. So I got the same answer both ways. A dollar twenty-seven. So I got the same answer both ways. Um, I am going to show you one more example using this method. I'm not going to show you another example of subtraction because you guys are should be good with knowing how to do with subtraction. But this way is very good for students who like to have a visual and be able to draw. So, um, let's say someone wanted to buy a piece of candy. Cost two. 47 and the person paid with paid with paid five dollars okay so I just did it this way instead of writing the whole word problem for us so you go into a store the piece of candy costs 247 and you pay with a five dollar bill so we're gonna go ahead and draw our number line again just across I'm gonna put what I paid with at the end so five dollars I'm going to put how much it costs at the front because we're going to be counting towards the five dollars. All right. So I know I want to try to get to like the nearest quarter that I can add. So if I get to 50 cents, I know I can add 50 cents to get to the next dollar. So I need to figure out how to get to 50 cents from here. So I know 48, 49, 50. So I need to add three pennies. So on the top, I'm going to write three pennies. All right. So now I'm at 250. And I know if I add 50 cents more, it's going to take me to the next dollar. So I'm going to go ahead and add 50 cents now. So that's going to take me to $3. Once you get to the dollars, even dollars, it's easy to add your hills. So now I'm going to add one hill for $1. If I add $1 to $3, I have four dollars. I'm gonna add another dollar and that's gonna take me to five dollars. After I do this all I have to do is add my money together. So I have one dollar, two dollars, so we would add them all together. One dollar, two dollar, a dollar fifty, and a dollar fifty three. So I have one dollar fifty three cents would be my change. If you guys have any questions when completing your assignment, please let me know. Remember, you can use either way, but we would love to see your work for whichever way you do choose to use. So if you use subtraction, that's fine. If you use a number line, that's fine. Either way, whichever way you're more comfortable with is the way we want you to use. We just want you to be able to figure out the change. So we're trying to give you a couple options to use. Please let us know if you have any questions.